Hey guys, so we're finally back. The manufacturer of the soft starters has authorized our warranty replacement. Our supplier has processed the warranty replacement and we've got brand new Motortronic soft starter uh, chassis to replace these units. We're gonna replace two and one, both, because we have seen them both do this strange anomaly. Um, where the computer uh, is uh, sensing voltages and currents that aren't accurate to the real world and when it's sensing these phantom uh, values it's tripping or faulting on uh, loss of phase from under voltage or under current, over current we've seen, um, and current unbalance we've also seen. So we feel like we finally nailed it down. Now today's the day I can finally replace both of these chassis with brand new ones, take down all their model and serial number information, box these two units up, and get them sent back to the manufacturer. And I'm really looking forward to getting a good answer from them when they uh, perform an autopsy on each one to find out exactly what went wrong. Once I find out what went wrong from them, I'll put it down in a pinned comment on this video. If you're not quite clear on the whole saga of these, uh, I'll put a link to one of the earlier videos uh, up here someplace so you can check it out uh, for yourself and kind of see exactly what's led to this. This has been one of the more involved troubleshooting uh, jobs we've had recently and it definitely qualifies as what I call an anomaly where uh, it's very easy to get uh, off the wrong track and uh, make assumptions and, and not quite clear where to go. Is it the utility? Is it the load? Is it the machine? But slowly and methodically using data logging, we were able to uh, kind of pinpoint and find patterns and trends in the fault behavior. And then kind of fortuitously, luckily, I was actually here and able to see um, the load and then compare it with the logged values that the unit was transmitting to our SCADA. So for now, it looks like I just need maybe a 10 mil socket and some connectors. And I'll be spending the next little bit getting all this uh, disconnected and then the new unit in and wired up then we'll be putting in new parameters and we will be uh, testing them out and running them and make sure everything works and then hopefully I don't have to come back here for a very long time um, since I have been coming here about every week or two for the last about three months so this has been a long time coming for us so I'm looking forward and, and, and my ideal is to uh, go someplace solve a problem or do an installation and never go back um, except for maybe 10 years, 15 years, that would be nice. So okay, let's get started. We'll unbox these new ones and get these new one, these old ones out. All right. To be, they are identical models. Everything about them is identical. Um, the only difference is the remote keypad. So this is mounted remote on the existing one. So I need to take, I need to take this adapter plate off and put it on the amp. Awesome. The bracket broke. Prying the adhesive off. Ah, that sucks. That's why it's nice to just use machine screws to hold things together, but uh, this is just a bridge. 
And I wonder why they don't just use machine screws. Yeah, let's start it on. Okay, let's see how it feels. Broken, will it stay in there? Oh yeah, that's just, that's fine. But I'll talk to them about getting the replacement. But it isn't gonna stop us today. We can carry on. Oh, I need a new one of them. I'm certain I have the old ones in one pile, the new ones in another pile, and then I wrote my own date code and pump two and pump one onto them, and then I took a picture of the serial of the new units, and then uh, we'll box up these old ones when we leave to ship them back to the manufacturer. So now I can just throw these bad boys back in and get all this wire harness and uh, line and load connections put back on. I've worked in tighter spaces. Let's see here, number two, number two. I've worked in tighter spaces. This is not too bad for uh, as far as wiring goes. It's actually pretty cozy in here. Famous last words. Let's see how it goes. Tossing it in. Yeah, nice. That's, they made the window hangers, I think that's what those are called. They made those big enough. They go over the bolt and the washer, the nut and the washer. So you can just throw them on and then they put studs on the bottom. So oh, just little details like that make life a lot easier. All right, let's snug him up and get everything all connected. to our door HMI. Good. Power's in, line's in. All good. Controls, bypass, serial comms. And then I just want to verify, I took a picture before I disconnected everything of each pump's rotation, phasing rotation, holding up a number. So one, brown, orange, yellow. Good. And two, brown, yellow, orange. Good. Okay. Don't want to mess that up. And then let's just double check connections in here. That all looks good. Control, serial, bypass. Okay. I think we're ready to turn everything back on. Put them both in off, turn on the service, and then we'll fire them up. Very good. All right, I'll get my laptop and we'll set up the parameters for both of them and then uh, box these old ones up, send them back to the factory. All right, two and one. Let me get this straight. So one, F1, 53, good. Two, 
F1 is 80. One F two is one point one five. Which is sixty seven. Good. And pump two's address sixty seven is three. Good. That's it. Okay. Let's run uh, two in hand. We're all set. It's 4.09 p.m. Three, two, one. Good. Just babysit it for a second. 75 amps. Looks good. Seems to be good. We're two minutes in. Could go verify that there's flow. Yep, there's flow. Around 100 or so GPM. Looks good. We'll go check it on the HMI too. Yeah, 103, 104 GPM. Looks good. Alright. All right, well one has been running for about 15 minutes. Amps are good, flow is solid. Um, it wasn't until a little while after the initial install that we got these anomalous faults. So I can't say with complete certainty that it's not gonna do it again. Um, the factory is confident that when they get the old units that I just took out, when they get them shipped back, that they're gonna dissect them and they'll be able to figure out what's going on and give us a good answer as to why they both failed. Um, whatever they respond with, I'll definitely put as a pinned comment down uh, below this video. Uh, I expect them to have that answer in about a week or so. Probably shouldn't take too long. And uh, yeah, it's what a, what a ride this has been. I really hope I don't have to come back here for a long time and we can just continue monitoring this site remotely and um, helping that way. So we can go ahead and take one off and watch the D-cell. Looks good to me. And then we can put it in remote. And that's really all there is to it. I just got to reset the uh, sequence faults on the SCADA system. Otherwise, that's it. We're all set. Um, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.